Thank you very much. And now I will give the floor to the last speaker, Stan Van Afrika. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deval, for, for the opportunity to share uh, the floor with uh, so incredible fighters for freedom. It's, it's really an honor to, to be part of this, this table and, and participate in this event of the coordination of associations and people for freedom of conscience. And uh, I'm going to to read a report written by uh, Mr. Eric Wu from the European International Religious Forum for Religious Freedom, based focused on the case of the refugee status of members of the Church of Almighty God in France. And I hope I can represent him well enough. The difficulties that the members of the Church of Almighty God face with respect to their asylum request in France are not very different from those they encounter in other European countries. Nevertheless, we will list the main, and in my opinion, they are wrong, uh, the wrong reasons for which an overwhelming percentage of requests have been denied in France for the members of the Church of Almighty God. I will explain briefly why and how France could improve its vision of the members of the Church of Almighty God as well as its knowledge of this church, review its decision and grant asylum to the genuine refugees. As a note, this is not uh, an attack on France, this is not an attack on Europe, this is not even an attack on China. It's basically a dialogue on how things should be based on the current law of different countries and international laws. The so first point, Several cases show a confusion between the movements called house churches and the ones which are included in China in the official list of Xi Jiao, which has already been explained, the so-called evil cults, or more exactly, unorthodox teachings. While the first ones are not systematically persecuted, the last ones are without doubt a constant target of persecution by the Chinese authorities. And this is inscribed in the very provisions of the Chinese Criminal Code, as Mr. Mr. Introvin already mentioned. Because of this confusion, French courts have argued several times that there is no systematic persecution based on the incorrect presupposition that the Church of Almighty God is one of the house churches, and is ignoring its presence on the list of the evil courts. However, a few recent decisions in France have finally recognized that a systematic persecution actually exists in China against the members of the Church of Almighty God. Second point, most of the conclusions of the French courts are based on a document published by the, what is called the DIDR, which is the Division of Information, Documentation and Research. The Division of the OPRA, which is the French office for the protection of refugees and stateless, and is in charge of gathering information to support this uh, French Office of Protection of Refugees agents in their decision-making process. This document has been compiled on the basis of sources available on the internet until a few years ago, and these were mostly documents emanating from or influenced by the propaganda of Chinese anti cults We all know here how uh, the internet can be used for the good and for the bad, and how misinformation can be spread about anybody and about anything. These, these decisions contain numerous errors that give a wrong picture of the church, its doctrine, its social positions, etc. Recently, four well-known religious scholars have written to the DIDR in order to offer correct data on the movement and tackling one by one the errors contained in the DIDR document. The DIDR has not answered yet, but it is clear that these independent expert opinions should completely change the way French authorities take their decisions concerning the asylum seekers from the Church of the Almighty God. So third point, 
The same happens with three documents on the Church of Almighty God, which were published by the Immigration and Refugee Board of Canada in 2013 and 2004, on the basis of the information available in these years before there was any uh, scholarly studies done in regards to this church and that before they were being published. These documents are regarded as authoritative in France. Again, recently, the same four religious scholars have written an expert opinion that has been sent to the Immigration and Refugee Board of Canada, giving updated and more accurate data of the Church of Almighty God and asking that the old documents be corrected. Paradoxically, while often quoted in France, the Canadian documents are almost never quoted in decisions rendered in Canada about the asylum seekers of the Church of Almighty God, whose application has been accepted in a large majority of the cases talking about Canada. As a fourth point, based on these different documents, several French negative decisions concluded incorrectly that some asylum seekers were not really members of the Church of Almighty God. This, this ties in with one of the points you were mentioning, like why do you have to prove that you know all of the doctrines of a church to be able to, to get asylum, right? I mean, a believer can be a new believer. Uh, it doesn't mean being a new believer doesn't mean that you're not a true believer, right? So, because their answer about the church during interviews didn't fit exactly with the content that they had in the documents, the, the French authorities and the Canadian documents. So, having reviewed the answer that led to these wrong conclusions, it appears, uh, and also to the experts who have studied in depth doctrine of the church, that the asylum seekers presented the church correctly, while the French authorities instead they were comparing to wrong information about the actual beliefs and doctrines of the Church of Almighty God. To give you an example, one could consider that the fact that a member didn't know anything about a supposed apocalyptic prediction for 21st December 2012 was astonishing. And that proved that this was a pretended member of the Church, meaning not a genuine one. However, the truth, the fact, is that the Church of Almighty God, as an organization, as a movement, has never promoted such a prediction and never considered this part of its doctrine. Even scholars who have no sympathy at all for the Church of Almighty God have, have shown, have recognized the fact and mentioned that members of the Church of Almighty God do not believe on, on, this, on this prophecy. And that the actual, some members of this church who were believing on this because associating it with the Maya beliefs of the, on the end of the world, uh, they, they, were, they were corrected by, by the authorities of the church because these are not real doctrines, these are not the teachings of the Church of Almighty God. And when they were not wanting to be corrected, then these members were being expelled because they were not following the doctrine. As a fifth point, French authorities consider in several decisions that the fact that members were able to escape from China, sometimes with the help of officers who granted them valid passports, was a proof that there was no persecution. Come on, we all know about corruption. We all know corruption can be found in every country. Sometimes people have used corruption to escape persecution. This is one of the facts. This opinion that uh, because they escaped, they cannot be persecution because they managed to do that, this shows that they don't really know these authorities, they don't really know the, the Chinese society. It stems from ra real lack of knowledge in the Chinese society. A recent expert opinion by an Italian professor of sociology, Professor Pierluigi Zoccatelli, who has studied both Chinese religious movements and Chinese immigration into Europe, explained very well how Chinese immigrants can easily take advantage of the flaws of Chinese system and sometimes of the corruption prevailing in China to get proper passports, even when theoretically they should not be able to get them. Six point before I finish. 
Some decisions in France were recognizing the existing persecution targeting the Church of Soul of Almighty God in China, considered that the individual asylum seeker could not prove that she or he was a prominent member with a specific position inside the church. Again, we go back to one of the five points that have to be taken into consideration when granting a refugee status. Of course, this argument is narrow-minded. The Chinese criminal code, as commonly interpreted by the courts in China, is quite clear that the mere fact of being active in a Xi Jiao group, the so-called dangerous groups, dangerous cause, is a crime which is punished with jail penalty without distinguishing whether the member occupies a specific position or is just a common devotee. So the risk of persecution, as well as the fear of being persecuted, as requested by UN United Nations standards to obtain the status of refugee, exist even if the members who do not occupy a specific position in the church are the ones asking. As mentioned earlier, a few decisions from the French National Court of Asylum Seekers have recognized, finally, the systematic persecution of the members of the Church of Almighty God. This is a good evolution that, if confirmed by subsequent case law, will open the door to many more fair decisions regarding the asylum seekers of the Church of Almighty God, but also of any other religious movement who may face a similar situation. In the last year, the production of academic literature of the Church of Almighty God has considerably increased. Many reliable documents have been produced, and for the first time ever, it is possible to really understand the doctrine of this peculiar Christian Church, as well as the challenges that it's facing regarding its persecution in China. It is therefore of the most importance that the French authorities and any other authority in the European Union specifically or around the world uh, take, take knowledge of how to actually protect individuals. Because as I saw on one of your slides, uh, refugees, people escaping from religious persecution, they are human beings. Sometimes authorities forget that they are dealing with human beings. And they believe it is to detach themselves from, 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 from the emotions. They, they, they deal with people as if they were members. Right? So we have to insist on humanizing all these laws. These laws are not for robots. These laws are for human beings. So what is at stake? Right now, it is not a minor issue. What is at stake is the safety of persecuted human beings and of the members of this church, specifically in this case, which we are dealing in this side event at the United Nations. But it is a matter of life or death. Sending back to China members of the Church of Almighty God today, it equals to being a complice of the persecution that they will have to suffer. While it is understandable that errors occur when there is a lack of data available to take proper decisions, this excuse does not anymore exist today. Reliable data exist, they are available, and they must be studied carefully and taken into account by the French authorities and any other authorities receiving such applications. Thank you uh, for, the, for this conclusion.